Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy from Superpath, and today I'm here with Danny Bell, the founder and CEO of Scribbly. Hi hey Danny, how are you? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a sales role that you're hiring for at Scribbly, uh, which is a content agency, a world that I know well, and so I'm curious to chat with you about that. Um, but maybe first you could just give us a little bit of the, the origin story of Scribbly. Yeah, sure. So Scribbly is basically, um, it's a content marketing service. We primarily work with startups and small agencies as a white label partner. And it was pretty much born from, um, so I used to work as a freelance content marketer and copywriter. And the very, very embryonic version of Scribbly was just me attempting to kind of scale my time. Initially, that looked like me working with a network of writers who I had trusted and had a really good relationship with. But eventually it turned into this fully fledged kind of productized service, which is now in its current form and about two years old. That's fantastic. And are you, is the company remote or do you, do you have an office yeah, somewhere? Yeah, fully remote. Yeah. So I'm based in Copenhagen in Denmark. And then the two other, full, uh, so we have two other full-time kind of account manager type, project manager type uh, roles. And they, one is in London and one is in Berlin at the moment. Got it. Got it. And so I assume that as the founder CEO, you've probably been doing sales mostly exactly. yourself for the past few years. Um, could you just talk a little bit about what, what the sales process is like at Scribbly? Yeah, sure. So for the, for the time being, it's purely inbound led. Um, I've done a lot of brand building around both the Scribbly, but also myself as a brand. So like doing lots of podcasts and um, writing in lots of articles and um, interviews and things like this. So there's a general kind of like pretty strong awareness of Scribbly, which leads to a steady stream of leads. Um, not not huge for the time being because it's really not been a focus area for us but you know maybe like a call or two every day um those leads come via the website um they send a request for if people can book uh sorry buy a package direct online but everybody wants to have a chat first sure. so they'll submit a request um i'll then book in a call with them and um, that call is basically like a content consultation. So we'll figure out like, what do they need? What kind of approach should they be taking with content marketing? And it's really like an advisory um, type sales conversation, really not at all about pushing a sale on them, but rather guiding them to think about the right things and then saying, this, these are the ways that we can help you. Um, and that's quite an important thing, actually, like a whole approach and ethos around um, sales at Scribbly is very much that kind of guiding partner. We've never, ever um, pushed and to try and uh, drive a sale in a hard way. Um, like we have a very soft approach. So I think that's quite an important thing. If you're the kind of person who is a bit more sort of like, I don't know, there are other industries where that harder sales type works very well but it doesn't really align with like how we do things here. So I think that's right. like quite an important thing to think about. It's like your, your style of um, uh, when you're on a call with someone, you know, the end goal is to sell something like what's your natural approach there. I think that's like an important thing to consider. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I assume there's also a thing. This is a very similar setup to weird animals where customers pay a, like a monthly subscription for a yeah. certain amount of content. Therefore yeah. uh, there's no sense forcing a deal to close if it's not a great fit because if yeah. you end up spending much time onboarding them and then they ultimately leave, it's yeah. a waste of everyone's time. Exactly. And I think like, you know, we want to have really good relationships with everyone we work with. And often that means saying if we're not the right partner, um, often that will happen if, you know, if people, the, the businesses that we work really well for the ones that um, know they need to be spending money on content. So if we're still at a point where we're like, encouraging people that they should be making this investment in the first place they're they're too early for us oh, we, when people come to us and they're ready they know what they want to do and they're just looking for the right person or or partner to execute on that then that's where we kind of really try and nurture that into a customer um relationship but we don't do you know if someone comes and they're like really trying to drive a bargain or they're not you know they need convincing that like a few hundred dollars is is it really worth it like what am I going to get from it generally those always end up being the kinds of customers that either just leave pretty quickly or that we have a bad relationship with and it's not 
not worth it. So now we just kind of have this much clearer idea of what we're looking for in a sales call as well. Got it. Got it. I read, uh, I found a couple interviews with you, which I linked to in this doc below. And in one of them, you mentioned um, that you're big on documentation. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that the sales process and scripts and all that stuff is fairly well documented. Yes, exactly. So everything that you would need to know in terms of like how to use our CRM and how we define things within the CRM and like a kind of daily to do for someone in this role. are all documented sales scripts documented i think like i would really like to see someone come and bring their own approach and sort of adjust things to fit their personality type that's absolutely no stress at all i would welcome that um but i think there are like predefined things that you that person would would work within got it so if the if the person that ultimately you know fills this role is getting on calls with folks and, you know, talking through their content challenges and offering, you know, potential strategies, you know, very early on, it, they will need some content experience. You know, who, who is the right person that um, can do that, but, but can also, you know, get on calls and, and be a salesperson? Yeah. Um, so I think it's very important that you have worked with content or copywriting in some form or another. Um, like I say, these calls are advisory calls, so you need to know what you're talking about. And while often they might cover the same things, you know, we don't want to have a cookie cutter approach to each and every conversation. So it's really important that you can bring your experience and like your general kind of guidance to drive those conversations in the right direction. Again, that means being able to like having the experience to spot if someone is just not the right fit based on, you know, what you've worked with in the past and stuff like that I think that's like kind of the competency side of things but on the other side there's definitely you know certain personalities are better suited to sales than others like I'm the first to admit that I am the wrong personality type for sales like I don't enjoy it at all Um, I'm quite an introverted person and I, I get a bit shy when I'm talking with especially in a sales capacity like I get a bit kind of almost apologetic about you know being the one sort of when there's like a yeah it just I almost feel a bit apologetic basically I don't know why I'm probably British and and just personality type yeah um so I think it's also just this having this confidence to inspire trust in whoever it is you're talking to you know have very strong interpersonal skills like often we will speak to clients maybe once or twice so remembering things that they said to you before bringing those up like building these relationships that goes such a long way to to um, you know, eventually converting a sale. So I guess it's a combination of experience, but also just like traits of your personality. Right, that totally makes sense. On a, on a kind of personal aside, I had the opportunity to take on a sales role at a content agency after many years of doing content creation and content strategy, and I was very apprehensive about it. Um, it ended up being just a fantastic experience. I, I, I learned so, so much from yeah. getting on calls and talking to people. And a lot of things that I thought I knew ended up being totally wrong. And I learned, yeah. a bunch, you know, it was sort of a humbling experience to learn a bunch of things that were, yeah. that were true that I never would have anticipated. Um, so for someone who's, you know, has been working in content for a while and does have a, maybe a little bit more extroverted personality or, you know, or is happy to like get on calls and connect with new people and is eager to learn, like this sounds like it could be a really good opportunity. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, this eagerness to learn thing is like a really good, uh, important point, you know, uh, we would work together very, very closely for a, a significant period of time um, to, so that I, you know, it'd be like a watch and learn and then learn by doing type experience. So everybody, I've worked with other people in sales roles uh, within Scribbly and they've had different styles to me and that's been absolutely fine and it's worked. So I think it's a case of just sort of like, we, you know, not feeling, you're not going to be left on your own from day one. Like we'll definitely right. work together on each and every call until you felt ready to sort of uh, fly the nest, so to speak. Um, but ideally I would be looking for someone who has some experience and this could be experience, like even just as a freelancer, you're selling yourself all the time. So you don't necessarily need to have been uh, in right. a sales role. I think if you've just got experience of like, um, of selling content or selling yourself as a content provider, you're probably going to have, you know, 
enough of the, the, the core things that this role will require. That's a great point. That's a great point. I had not thought of that. Um, I, you had mentioned that this role will, will likely be part-time and then evolving into full-time, you know, over time. Yeah. Do you have a rough idea of what that looks like getting started? Like how many, how, I don't know how you want to measure it, like days per week or hours per week that a person might be working in the first couple months. Yeah. So I think um, the thing is, it really depends a bit on um, the, where this person is located because we are, uh, you know, have clients all over the world tend to be a, a healthy mix between um, Europe and uh, the U S which means that um, depending on where you're based, you might need to kind of like have your calendar available for calls only at a certain part, part, uh, sure. part of the day. Uh, so that you don't then have these really sporadic things. Like if you were based in Europe, what would typically happen, what happens in my calendar is you might get one call at 9 a.m. for someone in Europe, but then another one at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. for someone based in California. Right. Um, so we'd have to figure out like how to structure days so that they are um, condensed. But I think what would typically, like in the short term, a typical setup would be, I think, a few hours every day, maybe like, between a quarter to half a day of being on sales calls and also following up on previous leads, mm -hmm. um, nurturing the ones you've already had conversations with and, and trying to nudge those over the line as well. So, but, so that's the, the very short term, but as I mentioned um, to you earlier, I'm going to be going on maternity leave at the end of the year. And um, I would definitely be looking to just take a complete step back from all sales at that point. And at that point, I think, you know, come kind of September, October time, we'd be looking to ramp this role up quite significantly. Got it. And I think, you know, if someone has experience with outbound uh, sales and they have done it before and they've got a proven track record that it, you know, it would work. As in, I know these things are, are different. You can't just say um, th there is no formula to outbound sales. But if you've got a proven record with generating leads as well, then we could definitely look earlier on to um, making it a bit more of a substantial role earlier. Got it. Okay. So that was going to be my next question was inbound versus outbound. So yeah. there are like, you, there is a, there is an existing sales pipeline and sounds like you're looking to add to that through some outbound efforts as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's something we started to do this year, the beginning of this year, then Corona hit. So we just paused on all outbound stuff completely. Gotcha. But I think, um, especially like there are some some niches that are have have proven to be big opportunity areas for us one of the main ones is um agencies like we we deliver white label content to a lot of agencies so i think you know some if someone was to just focus on reaching out to those kinds of um uh clients and seeing if we could develop new relationships and that there could definitely be something there definitely for whatever it's worth one of the things that i found to be particularly useful at animals was just being a, a member of different communities, being active on yeah. Twitter, like networking, you know, like you just, it's very hard to reach out to someone you've never met before and say, Hey, do you want to buy some content? Yeah, and course, it's much yeah. easier to sort of slowly establish those relationships over time by helping and offering advice and helping people yeah. promote their stuff and all that, all that exactly. good stuff. Um, yeah. I'm, so I, I'm guessing that the right person for this role would be someone who's immersed in the content world and has some existing connections and, uh, you know, would be willing to, be active on social media and communities. And yeah, like exactly. That. Or just, you know, someone who is willing to kind of do um, prepare lists of potential like of prospects and, and try and find encouraging and, and interesting ways of, of reaching out to them without it being like um, spammy. Sure. Um, that leads us to one other thing which we should just briefly cover, which is um, how this person will be compensated. You, yeah. Will it be commission or salary? or some mix of both? Yeah, so I think what we would like to start on is um, a base salary with a commission per lead. Um, that's still being ironed out at the moment. And I think it would depend slightly, uh, certainly the base anyway, would depend slightly on um, the experience level that the person has. Mm -hmm. um, this is very much a role that I want to become salaried as and when it, it's, it, it makes sense. We have enough leads every day that it would make sense for someone to be working more consistently. Um, as in, you know, more than just a couple of hours every day, but something more substantial, then I would definitely like to, to make this a salaried role. 
So I guess it's something that this person should think of as if they're already in like working as a freelancer, this is another way of adding some additional revenue into their monthly um, income. And it's completely scalable, right? Like as much um, as many leads as you convert will dictate how many, how much uh, commission you would earn on a monthly basis. And especially if you were to add on um, outbound stuff into this as well. So I do think there's like high earning potential. Um, but I think it's one of those things that will take some time to sort of build up, if that makes sense. Definitely. Definitely. Well, cool. I think this is an exciting role. I mean, just sort of like I mentioned, based on personal experience, I think getting, um, getting exposure to sales is hugely valuable for your career, whether you end up you know, spending the rest of your life working in sales or you do it for a couple of years and then take those skills and build on them to start your own business or, you know, kind of evolve into an executive or whatever. I think it's uh, mm. really interesting. Anything else we should, we should know about this role before we sign off? I think, yeah, just one thing um, to, to think about is we're a really small team. I meant, like I mentioned, we're really fully remote. Um, that is a particular way of working, which may or may not work for everybody. Um, I think, you know, if you're coming into this kind of role, expect to be very autonomous. We have a strong culture. We're always like, uh, so every day we connect, um, we have a hangout every day and we are really good friends, but it is a different experience than sitting in an office with a team and um you may you know we might not even be in the same geography as this as the, the person in this role so i think it should be you know you should definitely have the mindset of being kind of very self-driven self-motivated not necessarily need need like a strong kind of team presence day to day even though we will be there and you'll feel us you know we're we have lots of things in place to make sure that you don't feel just like on your own but nonetheless it is different so sure. i guess that's just one thing to bear in mind no that's great that's great i'm glad you pointed that out um and definitely you're right it's a certain type of person that you know yeah like likes those big open blocks of time to do their work yeah um so that's great well cool well so superpath will be helping a couple folks apply there'll be instructions in the stock on how you can go about doing that um looking forward to meeting some of the folks who are interested in this and helping you get this role filled quickly so thank you danny appreciate your time and you uh much. talk to you soon thanks bye Take care.